Tax Objective 2 Problems Problem 1. Simplify the algebraic expression 4 times quantity x plus 1 minus 3 times quantity x plus 2. In simplifying expressions, we must recall the rules of algebra such as the order of operations, the distributive property, and combining like terms, just to name a few. The thing we'll do first is use the distributive property of algebra. The distributive property applies to multiplication. The 4 outside parentheses is, is distributed to the x and the 1, both inside parentheses. And for the other set of parentheses, the negative 3 is distributed to the x and the positive 2 inside the other set of parentheses. Distributed, this becomes 4x plus 4 and minus 3x minus 6. Next, we need to further simplify by combining like terms. What kinds of terms do we have? We have x's, 4x and minus 3x, and we have numbers, 4 and minus 6. We can put the x's and numbers in any order we want because of yet another property of algebra, the commutative property of addition. And that is that when adding, the order does not matter. And since 4x minus 3x equals 1x or x, and 4 minus 6 equals negative 2, these simplify to x minus 2. And that is our answer, b. We can also use a calculator method to check our answer or even solve if necessary. To check for expression equivalency, enter a number for x, and I ventured 0.5. Just don't use 0, 1, or 2. Next, press the storage key above the key, uh, the on key at the lower left on the keypad. Then, press the x key between alpha and stat. Press enter. Now, enter the original expression as written, 4 times quantity x plus 1 minus 3 times quantity x plus 2. Press enter. We get a value of negative 1.5. Now we try the answers to see which one also gives us a value of negative 1.5. First, for answer A, we enter x minus 1 and press enter. And we get negative 0.5, which is not the right answer, so we cross it off. Next, we enter answer B by entering x minus 2 and pressing enter. We get negative 1.5, just like we did for our original expression, confirming that B is the correct answer. Problem 2. Which inequality represents the range of h of x? The key thing to getting this problem is the understanding of the word range. In algebra, there are pairs of words that together explain and describe things. The associated pair of words here is domain and range. The thing we need to remember is that domain is associated with x values and that range is associated with values of y. How do I remember if range is associated with x or y? Well, domain comes before range in the dictionary, just like x comes before y in the dictionary. Just knowing that allows us to eliminate answers a and b since they are involved with values of x and not y. So since we're talking about y values, we're going to place red line segments to help us with the extent of the range at y equals 0 and at y equals 4. And since the lower limit of the function is 0 and the upper limit is 4, there can be only one correct answer, D. Problem 3. Based on the graph, which is the best estimate for a marathon time for someone who trains for 175 hours? This problem is an estimating problem, which means that we have to be careful and be sure to think it through. We should know that since the problem calls for us to estimate that we will not get an exact answer, but we look for the best answer. Here we have a graph showing total training hours on the horizontal axis with respect to marathon times on the vertical or dependent variable axis. We are asked to estimate the marathon time of someone who is trained for 175 hours. We should notice that for each vertical line segment it represents 50 hours of training. So 175 hours is halfway between the 150 hour and the 200 hour lines. And here it is marked in red vertically between 150 and 200. We're trying to predict a time based on this input value. And to do that, we can draw a line of best fit for the existing points. And that is what we've done here in blue. And we see our intersection point here at less than four and one half hour uh, hours on the horizontal line. It looks to be about halfway between the four and the four and one half hour horizontal lines. So that would give us a best answer of four and a quarter hours or four hours and 15 minutes. 
Now for that we circle answer B. Is answer C, 4 hours and 30 minutes, a possibility? Yes, but answer B is our best answer. Problem 4. Based on the scatter plot, which statement is true? Like most problems, this one is approached best by thinking clearly. One thing we can do is draw a trend line to fit the points as best we can. I recommend drawing a line like this blue line. What is the slope of the blue line of best fit? We don't know what it is because there are no numbers to calculate slope, but we do know that the number is a negative number because the line goes downward when going from left to right on the graph. And a negative slope of that line of best fit corresponds with a negative correlation. And that makes answer B our correct answer. Problem 5. A rectangle has an area of 4x squared minus 14x plus 12 square feet. Its length is 2x minus 3 feet. Which expression describes its width? Again, this is about understanding what we have. The formula for the area of a rectangle is area equals length times width written as A equals LW. I like to draw a picture, in this case a rectangle, in order to conceptually understand the problem as well as possible. This expression, 2x minus 3, which is the length of the rectangle, times one of these expressions on the left given as answer choices A through D, is equal to this area, 4x squared minus 14x plus 12. There are a lot of ways to solve this problem, but what we'll do is set up the rectangle we drew earlier into a box to multiply the expressions for length and width, which I've done by placing two line segments to split up the rectangle into four cells. Next, we place the expression for length at the top of the box, which is 2x minus 3, then we're going to try the widths out to see which one multiplies out properly to give the area of the rectangle. Since we need to multiply out to 4x squared, the answer has to be either b or c because that's the only one that comes up with 4x squared between those two uh, factors. And we'll try b first. So we place 2x and plus x plus 4 on the left side of the box. Next, we multiply all the terms together to get the area. The upper left cell of the box is 2x times 2x equals 4x squared. The upper right cell is 2x times negative 3, which equals negative 6x. In the lower left cell, we place the product of 4 and 2x, which is 8x. And in the lower right cell, to complete the box, we have negative 3 times 4, or negative 12. Next, we add our like terms together, which are the x terms, 8x and negative 6x. So the two terms combined are 2x, here shown in red. Therefore, the product of this length and width is 4x squared plus 2x minus 12. And since that is not our area of 4x squared minus 14x plus 12, we cross off b because it's not the length that gives us our correct answer. Next, we'll try out answer c, a width of 2x minus 4. In the upper left cell, we put the product of 2x and 2x, which is 4x squared. And in the upper right cell, we place the product of negative 3 and 2x, which is negative 6x. In the lower left cell, we place the product of negative 4 and 2x, which is negative 8x. And in the lower right cell, we place the product of negative 4 and negative 3, which is positive 12. Next, we combine our like terms, negative 8x and negative 6x and they add up to negative 14x, which is shown in red at the center. And the product is 4x squared minus 14x plus 12, and therefore c is our correct answer. One way we can check multiple choices like these is to check for expression equivalency in our graphing calculator. First, enter a number that you want for x. I used 0.5. Next, press the storage key above the on key. Then press the x key on the keypad. Press enter. We've stored the value of 0.5 for x. Next, enter the expression for area, 4x squared minus 14x plus 12. Press enter. This value of 6 means that if the value of x were 0.5, the area of the rectangle would be 6. Now we'll try the answers. First, enter the expression for the length of 2x minus 3 
Note how the 2x minus 3 is inside parentheses. That's crucially important to have those two terms inside parentheses. Next, enter the expression for the width, 2x minus 4. It's again very important to place that 2x minus 4 inside parentheses. Press Enter. Since that number for the value is also 6, we've demonstrated that our answer is correct. Check. This has been Tax Objective 2 Problems. Thanks for viewing.